Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 283 of the Truck Dashers Podcast. I'm your host, as always, I'm Tyler, and joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Hey, Tyler. Hey. Doing all right? Let's get the show on the road. <laughs> yeah. So, kind of a weird um, show for us. Um, people don't remember, it's been a week for you guys, but it's not been a week for us. Uh, la- uh, I said last week on 282. Uh, that I am currently, as of this recording, which is really exciting to think about, um, or as not as of this time recording, but uh, at this time, this episode releasing, I will be in Las Vegas uh, celebrating uh, the Talking Ship uh, community's 10 year anniversary. Uh, so that's gonna be incredibly exciting. So obviously, I won't be able to record an episode. Um, actually, no, I probably could record an episode like on Sunday, uh, but that's I'll probably be too hungover to do so. Uh, so this is a, this is just the easiest way uh, easiest solution we have here is we're gonna do a uh, we're doing a double header so this is part two 282 was part one it was a normal podcast this episode's gonna be a little different um, we have a uh, thing uh, uh, in our show notes we've had there since pretty much the beginning uh, I called it the uh, the fuck all to talk about questions uh, it is something we've always it's, it's kind of like our rainy day fund uh, for topics uh, for like we've had weeks where there's just nothing to talk about. Uh, we'll do a regular, we'll just do a show when we just ask each other questions out of, we'll pull from this, uh, little rainy day fund that we have and talk about it. Um, or if there's just weeks where there's only a one or two topics and all, and just, we will pull a couple out of just kind of to make a regular, make a full episode. Um, so we, we've pulled out from here and there from, for quite a while now, but, uh, this, it's been, a, it's been a little while. It's probably been a, about a year and a half or so. I know you, Troy and I did like a. Rainy Day Fun Podcast yep. uh, last late, I want to say early 2017. Yeah, that so was it might good. Have been like, yeah, so late winter probably, so it's been a little while. Uh, but we still have some questions in there, so we're going to, I don't know how many we're going to cover. We, uh, we're just going to kind of see where the conversation takes us. Um, uh, we could get through all of them. We could get through one or two of them. Um, but what we're going to do is... Uh, we both have the questions in front of us. If we come with some of them off the top of our heads, we'll, we'll blurt them out. Uh, but uh, we're going to take turns asking each other. We'll pick from these these topics. We'll ask each other the questions, and we'll go from there. Uh, so, Gables. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you the honors. Do the, They ask the first question. All right. Okay, so do you ever feel guilty for playing video games? Ooh, okay. So this is, uh, I think Troy actually had this one, so... Um, this is, this is a weird one, you know, um, mm. because you know, obviously we talk about games for, I'm not for, I was going to say for a living. That's not true. Uh, but we almost, uh, you know, we've been doing the show for over five years now. We, we obviously love video games well before that fact. Um, but do I ever feel guilty playing games? Uh, yes. Uh, I, yes, obviously I do. Um. I think for the name certain situations, uh, like definitely like, like in the winter time, uh, I, I do more because, uh, with my job I have currently in the winter, uh, you, you know, like I've, I've talked about many times before labor day to Memorial day is really busy for us, especially like, in you know, the dead ass winter, uh, like that December, January, February time is like our craziest time of the year and more March to a certain extent. Um, so, I feel guilty then because I'm not really ho- I'm not home a lot. I'm not I'm 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 at work. Yeah. Uh, 70, 80 hours a week. So when I come home, uh, I don't really talk to my family. Uh, I to you know I don't really uh, I spend a lot I, I spend as much time as I can with Louis, um, who I love very much and is uh, my kid to me. Um, but I feel like a lot of times like I, ne- I neglect him a lot, which makes me feel st- I feel most guilty about that than anything. <laughs> Um, or it's like, you know, I come home from, come home from work. I, I haven't been home since 4.45 in the morning. It's now 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. By the time I lay down or sit down or by, you know, I take a shower, eat dinner. It's now 7, 8 o'clock. It's like the last thing I want to do is play fetch, uh, with Louie or hang out with Louie at all or do any activities with him. Um. So I, I think in those situations I do, and especially like uh, on like Sunday, like during that time where it's like Sunday is like the only day off we get. It's like all I want to do is like 
especially at that point when there's like a lot of great games coming out. Yep. You know, and, the, and the, unfortunately in the in the holiday season uh, is and even to a certain extent nowadays in the early the beginning part of the year, there's like a lot of great games coming out. It's like all I want to do is you know makes those work days harder. Where it's like I just want to go home and play Horizon or Breath of the Wild or uh, God of War. You know what I mean? It's like so those days uh, or football's on. You know, um, so the days are those days are rough. Uh, you know, it's like, it's all, and so I spend too much of that free time playing games, especially cause it's, it's shitty outside. So you don't, you can't really, you're stuck inside, uh, which sucks on top of that. Um, so I, those times I feel guilty. And then, you know, there's always times in the, in the, when it's spring and summer where it's like, even still like, when like, even I'm not working that much. It's like, I should really go out and like do something. Yeah, I know. Uh, right. You know, it's like, I should hit up Justin and see if he wants to go play Frisbee golf or I should go. Uh, just go out and do something, but it's like, it's so, it's like, ah, it's kind of hot. Ugh, that sounds terrible. Uh, and I just, you know, I sit around and play games and stuff, you know? Um, so in those cases I do when I, when I feel like I'm neglecting, um, people or, uh, I could be doing something better for myself. Um, those times I do. What about you, Gables? To a certain extent, there are times where I do feel guilty about playing video games, and that's mostly because I feel like I could be doing something else with my time. But at the same point, the stuff that I do, you know, in terms of, like, uh, video game stuff has brought me the most happiness out of, like, what I like to do. I mean, for... I know i got a bunch of different things I love to do. I love music. I love, like, watching stuff. I love, like, uh, like having fun with friends and stuff. But at the same point, it's like... I get to the routine and stuff. I, when I ever I work or if I'm dealing with a bunch of like family stuff, it's like the biggest appeal to me is like just chilling, just playing a good game or something like that, or just just passing the time or something, and not being readily as bored and stuff. Where you know it just kind of offsets things. You know, it's like I don't really feel guilty about playing video games, but at the same time, it's like <sighs> I know there are better things I could do with my time. But at the same point, it's like, it's that type of happiness that I just love having where it's just like, hey, I can go ahead and just like, after work or something, play a little bit of this, just fall asleep, and then like, just repeat the little process and stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Um, okay. So, my turn to pick a question. Right. Um, worst video game purchase or biggest regret with uh, a game? Or, like, you know, anything. So, worst purchase, huh? <laughs> Big, yeah, b- yeah. Be, you know, biggest regret, pur- regrettable purchase. I have one, if you want me to go first. Well, let's see. If we... Man, I'm just trying to think of, like, the one of the worst purchases or something I've done gaming-related. Hmm. You know, in the grand scheme of things, I think one of my, like, worst in terms of, like, purchases... Oof. Man, you're gonna have to go first on this one, man. I'm having a hard time. <laughs> okay. Um, the first one that popped in my head immediately was I remember I went and went up to uh, to a game store to trade a bunch of stuff. Not GameStop. Before it was actually a place called Gamers. It's you know local here in Iowa. I actually ended up working there for a couple of years uh, later on. But when I was a teenager, um, I remember the PS2 was like 200 bucks at this point. It's been out for a couple of years. Um, and I traded in a bunch of stuff. I had a GameCube, uh, I believe, and a Game Boy Advance. Um, and I traded in a bunch of games that had like 160, 170 bucks. And my mom was like, and you weren't, I wasn't like, we weren't like rich. We weren't super poor, but we were, I don't know, lower middle class probably. Um, so my family buying me games outside of like my birthday or Christmas was super rare. Um, and, uh, I remember we were at, we were there at gamers and I traded a bunch of stuff. My mom was like, all right, well I can, my mom and dad were like, all right, you can get, uh, we'll, we'll chip in a little extra for this. And we'll get you a PS2 if you want it. Um, and then you can get a couple of like a couple of cheaper games or, you can buy this brand new Game Boy Advance e-reader. Oh my god. So, what do you think dumbass Tyler did? You got the e-reader. 11, 12 year old. You're goddamn right I did. 
That was oh, the stupidest no. fucking thing. It was like fifty bucks. They dropped support like people, a few years later. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't even. Oh god, I don't. Even, they really didn't support it after that. It was the stupidest oh. damn thing. So we don't remember. It was, a, it was an e-reader. It read cards, and you stuck it in the top of your uh, your Game Boy Advance. Uh, it plugged in like a, a game cartridge, and there was like cards you can buy for like six, seven bucks a piece, and it had like little like sections of old like NES games on it, like Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong Junior, uh, things like that on it, and then like even some Pokemon cards. The newer ones had like little. Uh, Things that can scan on yep, it, and you had like stupid ass mini games. Remember, there was like a Pon- Ponya, I think, what was the Pokemon's name? Uh, they had like a stupid horse riding game or something. Oh, uh, Pony. T- and yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I bought that thing, and I got home. I didn't have it for an hour, and I immediately like I, I within an hour I knew I made a mistake. <laughs> like, You're an idiot, Tyler. So stupid. Like my dad was, my mom and dad were like, oh. Buy you a PS2. We will chip in 50 bucks to get you a PS2 and a couple games. Wow. And I didn't do it. So that's that's probably the worst. Um, trading in my Sega, my Super Nintendo back in the day to buy a Sega Genesis was up there too. Huh. Um, wow. Just so I could play Streets of Rage and Sonic. Uh, that was dumb. Um obviously a big mistake uh mainly just want to play Streets of Rage but that was I pretty much thought, yeah um but that's by far the worst easily the worst buying the e-reader instead of a PS2 uh what, you got one yet Gables oh I can think of a couple now that, I'm, now that you mentioned it right here let's see um like one of the worst gaming purchases that I ever bought really was back in the day and stuff when I bought let's see I actually managed to buy used a Atari 2600 and a bunch of games, right? And I figured, oh, hey, this is nice. I got, like, an old-school console and stuff like that. But, of course, being the idiot at the time, I forgot to I forgot to realize and stuff that I needed specific connectors and stuff in order to actually play those games on a TV, which I did not have any type of TV or connectors for it. So I ended up having to return my purchase because... This is like about 50 plus like Atari 2600 games and it's like oh man it's like that was a bad <laughs> decision but uh, in terms of say trades in terms of like thing I tr- I think one of my worst the worst actually decisions was to <laughs> trade in my old PS4 and all of the games that I oh, had yeah. for the Xbox 1S yeah. And all the various games for it. I knew this was a bad idea once about a month or so later or something like that during Extra Life. Actually, I bought that system predominantly because I wanted to play the game and stream things like for Extra Life. And I thought by doing so that would actually make my chances a little bit better. It's like, hey, maybe I can advertise a little bit more of this and that. I go on the things, it's like... I go on my friends list and everything else. Nobody's hardly playing shit. Nobody else yeah. is going and doing like stuff. It's like I tried streaming certain games. They would not stream properly. I tried like playing specific games and stuff. And even though I liked the idea, like of playing like uh, the retro replay stuff with the whole like uh, all the rare rare games and like I had plenty of good games and stuff for it. I mostly bought digital stuff for that thing. Once you presented me with the offer of potentially getting a PS4, like buying your old PS4 and stuff in order to try to, like, you know, do that, just for, you know, for basically the cost of a fucking, like, $50 PlayStation card, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. (laughs) Yeah. And what happened is, like, about a month or two later, I ended up, oh, boy. Actually, the funniest part about it, the last time I played an Xbox One S or just the Xbox One in general, was the same day that I bought my Nintendo Switch. (laughs) And once... I was in the middle of playing Gears of War 2, right? I was already well over halfway through the campaign, and I get a call from Walmart saying they actually have, like, Nintendo Switch consoles in, that I could buy stuff that I had personally had saved bits of my tax rebate for. And after that, I traded off the Xbox One and everything else with it. (laughs) 
<laughs> so that was my worst gaming purchase, actually. Yeah, I remember you. Uh, I think it was like extra light. You got it like the week, like the week of extra light, yeah. and you actually had to go back to like GameStop or something on extra life day because like your controller didn't work or something. Actually, I had to go back. And I had to go back to Walmart because I bought it from Walmart, oh, and okay. the controller did not work properly. And people was like, "Oh, hey, you could just go ahead and just like uh, buy an extra controller." Blah blah blah. I ain't fucking buying an extra shit. I am going yeah. to return that thing and get something that works right. <laughs> yeah, you could swap the controller out. I'm not buying another one. I know, right? I know, right? Yeah. But at the same point, it's like I basically did all of that and stuff, and I still had like the crazy time with it. <laughs> yeah. Um. On the flip side. Yeah. What are one of, what are some of your best gaming uh, purchase decisions? Okay, I actually got a I got actually have plenty of them, but uh, the one that sticks out in my mind was I had a dream the night before going to a pawn shop. Right, I had this dream where I went to a particular shop. I checked out their counter; they had a bunch of interesting games and stuff behind their case. And I knew where the place was, and I knew exactly that if I didn't go there, like, the next day, that I would actually go for them, you know, that I would probably regret it, you know? And it's like, I had the inkling, it's like, oh, hey, this is, like, the summer of, like, 2006, right? But after I graduated mm -hmm. high school. And so, it's like, my parents and I, we go to this pawn shop, and once I walk in, immediately I walk to the case, and unbeknownst to me, at the it's like I uh, saw games, a black label, Final Fantasy VII, complete without the manual, obviously, but Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy Origins. I have been waiting years in order to try to pick up these old Final Fantasy games because I heard nothing but good things about them, and I was able to pick up Final Fantasy VII, the black label, and this was at the time where it was going for like a... It was going to like 60 to around 100 bucks for that version of it on eBay. I got it for $6.50. That's a damn good deal. I know. And it's that... Actually, now that I think about it, there was another thing that kind of topped it. Because around a couple years later, I went to the same pawn shop. And I saw these Super Nintendo games that they were having for sale. That some dude did not pay his thing in time and what i basically had access to is i had a chance to purchase some of his old super nintendo games and some of the games that were there final fantasy 2 final fantasy 3 earthbound and like some of the other like there was like another game there but i ended up spending less than 20 dollars for that entire package because that pawn yes. shop did not know exactly what they had <laughs> and since then no. they used online stuff in order to get stuff going nice <laughs> um that's a good deal yeah uh for me i think one of like uh the better decisions i made with, with buying uh with gaming um i remember actually it was like early days of this podcast yeah it was maybe 30 episodes in at most uh i had the money put away to buy it i had a pre-ordered ps4 at launch yeah uh and i had the money put away to buy it and it was right before pokemon x and y was coming out yep and I, I, I actually on the podcast i talked to you and jake about it i'm like what should i do should i get the ps4 should i cancel my pre-order and get the the 3ds get pokemon x and uh super mario uh uh, 3D Land, uh, like what should I, like Luigi's Mansion, all that. Like, what should I do? And we had a whole discussion about it, and um, ended up buying the the uh, 3DS, and then I ended up buying the the PS4. Like a few, a couple weeks later, I got one. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think that pivot right there, you know, couple, about two months before the PS4 coming out. Uh, cause I want to, if I wouldn't have bought one then, buy a 3DS then, I probably wouldn't have got one at all. Yep. Um, or I would have missed out on some really great games at that point. But that was kind of like, it, it was funny cause like, I look at that, like that, that conversation I had with you guys and I, you know, I talked with Justin about it too. Uh, but that was kind of like my entry back into Nintendo. Yep. Yeah, it was. Uh, because for, 
for a very long time, like I like I went from being a Nintendo hardcore fanboy where they could do no wrong. Uh, I was like a Bible thumping uh, <laughs> Catholic uh, with Nintendo when I was a kid. To you know, obviously with the Wii, after a couple years into the Wii, you know, uh, 2008 or so, like and you know, once again, I started getting a little older. I got the Xbox 360 and the PS3, and I was like, that thing's stupid. Nintendo sucks, you know. <laughs> and you know, for a lot, I mean, and to a fair point, I mean, there were obviously some rough years there, but there's some good games. But you know, I definitely went away from it and uh, was very. I went from being they could do no wrong to they could do no right, and that was kind of my my way of like. It's a joke I always make, but I, I went from uh, I was a born again Nintendo fanboy uh, to a certain extent. Um, and that, I mean, I think I look at that 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 podcast and that decision, and it has made a huge difference, uh, you know, with my life, you know, to a certain extent, but also with this podcast and everything. Where I wouldn't have got the Wii U, and I wouldn't like that was kind of like the 3DS wasn't one that made me the born again fanboy, you know, but the the that was kind of like the thing that got me back on the uh, righteous path. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, being a Nintendo fan, and you know, I got you know, like I think it was, you know, I got the 3DS in like October. I bought it right, like right, right when the the X with Pokemon X and Y coming out, and then that following May, I bought the Wii U. Uh, so that you know, then obviously I got the Switch now. So who knows what would have happened if I wouldn't um, wouldn't have gotten that uh, 3DS at that point in time. So you know, I look at that as one of my one of my best decisions I made as a gamer, um, at least in the last. Yeah, that's the one that comes to mind first. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, but Gables, I believe it's your turn. All right, all right. What video game series, if done right and was good, would you like to see adapted to a movie? <laughs> Man, <laughs> I'll let you think on it for a minute. All right, I think I got one. I got a couple actually. Um, one, this wouldn't be a live action, but they'd be an animated. Okay. Uh, Last Guardian. Okay. Um, would be a great one for me, I think. If done correctly, obviously. Um, uh, what's the, oh shit, I forgot his name. What's the, oh fuck. Stu, was it Studio Ghibli? Yes. Ghibli? If he did that, if I was promised he was doing it, I would be all in, uh, <laughs> for that. Um, you know, Metal Gear Solid was the first one that came to mind. Right. But I just can't picture who the hell would be Salt Snake. Um, no, my luck, they would cast Mark Wahlberg for it and it ruin the whole fucking thing. Nicholas Cage. Um, Nicholas Cage is Salt Snake. <laughs> oh, God. That's my worst fucking nightmare. That'd be one of my worst nightmares. Um, I'm just, man, like, I'm trying to think of like a live action one that would be good. Um, uh, Video game fr- franchise. Fuck, man. I got <sighs> Gears of War would be a fun one if you had like the Rock in there, right? Somehow, like, I mean, obviously it's not gonna be like this is gonna be like the Godfather, but just as like a fun action flick, like you got Vin Diesel uh, as Marcus Phoenix, and then uh, the Rock as Dom. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Give me uh, the fucking the new freaking Mike, the guy from the freaking like Michael Street had his like freaking like uh, the cold trade. <laughs> yeah, I, Vince Vaughn is br- uh, Baird. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, cold train would be. You know what? Fuck that. Make Kevin Hart. <laughs> uh, fuck it. Uh, let's go stupid with it. Yeah, I don't know. That would be cool. Maybe that'd be fun. And enjoyable. I just can't. I my problem is like I'm thinking like okay, what would be great if done right? My problem is just like at the same time I'm thinking like casting, like well, who can we cast in these roles? Uh, and I just it's tough to do. Do you got anything, Gables? Well, I would definitely love to see if say the Legend of Zelda were to be adapted to like a French, mm. you know, like to a like actual movie thing if done right, right director. I'm more or less thinking about sort of like an animated sort of movie stuff. Right. Sit like some... Dan DeVito is the voice of Link. Oh, got oh it. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. 
No, no, Link would definitely be silent regardless. Everyone else, <laughs> everyone around him would just probably just go forward and just like start talking. But inside of this animated stuff, I would definitely would love to see either a Disney esque or a Sony pictures or something like that to where you would have oh well, actually that would be kind of funny if it was Sony pictures. Yeah. I'm just about that. <laughs> but um, I just basically would love to see the World of the Legend of Zelda. It could be different actors, could be different things, you know, where in this stand it would be modeled after a specific game, you know, like say you would have the first movie be like the, the original game, just going through, trying to rescue Zelda, fight Ganon and stuff, just doing all of the various slight things. It would be ideal to try to have it sort of like, in a way where it's not going to be potentially boring, say, with like the specific things you got to do inside there, inside the game itself, but just try to make it a little bit interesting, like maybe... Oh boy, oh my gosh, it's definitely going to be harder than I could possibly imagine, though, if you don't have, like, the main character that doesn't talk in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's ways to do it. You got, yeah. like, Navi and shit like that. Can I mean, it could be done. Yeah. Uh, it'd be weird, but yeah, it could be done. Oh, yeah, I would definitely love to see, like, a Legend of Zelda, like, stuff. That'd be kind of funny if, like, say... If we do get, like, a bunch of movies, say, like, uh, maybe, like, the re-emergence of Super Mario <laughs> inside of a movie. Mm. Yes. You know what? Just reimagine the the original Super Mario Bros. movie. Uh, and then just remake that one. I'd be fine with that, too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sir, the Goombas are dancing again. <laughs> God. I remember I think about the movie, the first thing I think of is uh, Yoshi. The first thing I think of is freaking like, uh, oh my god, who was the dude that played, oh no, the dude that freaking played Bowser. <laughs> Dennis Hopkins, I think? Yeah, Dennis Hopper, or something like that. Hopper, yeah. And then you have Bob Hoskins, is like fucking Mario, and John like is Luigi, like what the fuck kind of casting was yeah. this movie? <laughs> Mario was like, oh, I, I, I was going to take her to go see WrestleMania. <laughs> I still remember that line, I'm like, how the fuck do you forget about WrestleMania? <laughs> still bothers me it's been like 20 something years later and he's it's like why is Mario watch wrestling <laughs> I don't question that aspect I mean that's I'm fine with it like 1993 Wrestlemania era yeah I can I can understand that like that's stupid why would you voice your money in that but yeah that ew. just to be relevant with the kids <laughs> yeah I guess so I guess so I, I just kind of like I, I don't know how much that movie costs in like Amazon Prime, dude. I Justin has still yet to see that movie. Oh, really? And I, I, I like. I told him he's serious? not allowed to watch the movie until. Yes, I told him he's not allowed to watch it until I'm around. <laughs> That's actually there. a good one. I don't want to watch the movie. I just want to watch him watch the movie. <laughs> he just he was running. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> it was like it was like when we did a bad movie drinky drinky years ago, a yeah. couple years ago, and Nerves is a huge Judge Dredd. Uh, family the comic books oh no and he never watched the movie with uh uh not Arnold Schwarzenegger what's his special oh no like it was so bad he's like I refuse to watch it and we finally did a bad movie drink a drinking and we all watched it and you can like through Skype just hear his heart breaking <laughs> the whole time uh and I'd like to imagine that would be the case during this too like just I want to see the heartbreak in his face oh my god you know, no offense, Justin. I just want to see it happen. Watch it. I just want to see Justin watch this movie. Dude. I've waited years for this. I'm just going to buy it and make him watch it. He's going to buy it or something like that. Or just watching a streaming service. Having like everybody in the chat or something like watch it. <laughs> just like listening in. Man. It's like, oh, what? It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Just, we don't have to show the video. We can just show his face. <laughs> Put the camera on his face. That'd be, that'd be I, I could sell that for money. It's like, <laughs> like here's a guy dying online. <laughs> You just take a picture and you use it as your avatar on Facebook. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. There's not really, like, a lot of super... Like, there's, like... Uh, there's movies, like, there's franchises that we love that we like to see, but at the same time, like, those... Fra like, uh, at the same time, it's like, you just think about video game movies, it's like, they would just fuck them up. Oh, you yeah. Know? Like, it's just like a Resident Evil. Um, 
Yeah, Transformers, shit like that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, if Michael Bay comes anywhere near these movies, it's, you're fucked already. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a it bunch of explosions. There's not going to make a lot of sense in plot lines. It's just going to be just, you know, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, like, ah, oh, Titanfall would be kind of cool, but it'd just be like a Michael Bay Transformers ripoff. Yeah, it'd be kind of like almost um, like a Pacific Rim type of thing, too. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah, it'd just be bad. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's, there's not... Yeah, mm. it's just like I almost want to pick up like movies that like, like are franchises that I don't really care for that much that I like to see because yeah. just like I feel like anything like I know even says like if it the the question is if it's done if it was done right and it was good, uh, but I just like I have a hard time wrapping my head around that part of it. I don't know, maybe a Mass Effect, maybe. I was thinking about that too. If you yeah, oh man, if you do like uh, Interstellar style and you get uh, I forgot his name with the director from like Interstellar and uh, the Batman uh, Dark Knight movies uh, Christopher Nolan yeah if he was if you told me he was making uh, the Mass Effect uh, movies I'd be all in uh, but other than, yeah like I'm just trying to, yeah that's the hard part it's like think about it done right and it was oh, good dude. you gotta cast people go on I just thought of an excellent one, which potentially could be somewhat interesting because there are books to the series as well. The Witcher, dude. Ooh, they are making a TV show actually. Dude, even like a that. fucking, even like a freaking movie thing for like Witcher Three. You know, like a lot of the content for that series is derivative from books, and those games are actually based largely some of those uh, same books and stuff from the same dude. I forget his name, but at the same point. That would make an excellent movie. It would make an excellent movie because of all the things that Geralt has to go through and things they had to go through, like things that's, you know, it just it just matches that whole action movie sort of feel where you're facing off like a mythological monsters, you have a lot of love interests and stuff. It's basically sort of like, it's sort of like the typical sort of like guy action film and stuff. There's a lot of good fantasy yeah. elements to it and stuff. So it's like, you know, that would definitely be a perfect movie personally. Yeah, I mean, we're getting a TV show for, I think, on Netflix in the next few years, yeah. so, I mean, we, we hopefully that works out. Yeah, that, man, that's a good one. I'm just, I can't think of anything else off my head that I'd like to see. Um, but, uh, let's, hmm. All right, here's a question for you, Gables. All right. What's, what's one franchise that hasn't been around for a while that you want that you would love to bring back, yeah. But you had to give up a franchise that you love to bring it back. Ooh, okay, okay. So uh, at first, it's like thinking of a franchise I would love to bring back. Honestly, there are at least two franchises that I would love that I would love to bring back, only because you know that would actually be pretty fun. Like one is sort of like the Chrono games, like franchise it's like yeah the chrono trigger chrono cross sort of like franchise i would love to have that series like come back and stuff even if it's for like say a not like a reboot but like say a sequel game to like the original chrono trigger which who knows if that ever will potentially happen but in order to like uh replace with a franchise that i currently would like i currently would like here that probably would see like uh, some form that I would actually bear to lose. Hmm. 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 Well, let's see. You got one epic game pretty much here. Then it's like another one would have to take its place. <laughs> I could say that one, but I think I would piss you off so bad. Um. <laughs> uh, don't say it. Mm. <laughs> it's got to be one you love. I know. Not the one that, one that pissed me off. <laughs> if you say Madden, I'm, come, I'm flying... To Washington tomorrow. No, this is a series I love as well. And to be perfectly honest, if this series never came back, this franchise never came back, I probably wouldn't back too much of an eye. So I'm talking about Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. 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 Well, here's the thing. Let's, let's talk it out. <laughs> Now here's the thing. I do love Metal Gear Solid. I've played. Do you? <laughs> I've played through most of the games besides the fifth. 
Most? <laughs> <laughs> and man, I think well, some of my best times playing Metal Gear Solid, you know, is like Metal Gear 3, obviously, freaking the original one. Well, actually, I played through the Twin Snakes one, but the fourth one definitely was my favorite in terms of, like, things. Because that was the whole reason why I bought a PS3. But the reason why I would replace that franchise, the same with the Chrono Trigger, is because of that franchise is because of like the cohesiveness in the story great combat great change of pace and stuff but that's pretty much what i would probably do <laughs> okay. i would give up chrono's trigger for another metal Gear Solid game ah, yeah That'd be mine. even if hideo even if <laughs> even if hideo kojima was not even at the helm <laughs> yeah no um because Hideo yeah. Kojima, he's the one that freaking put, like, makes those games awesome. Yeah, he is Metal Gear. Um, I mean, that's that's him. Him and David Hayter. Uh, oh, boy. That one, that's a low blow game. <laughs> right well, hey, I love the um, series, too, so it was kind of a hard choice. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, what's sad is, like, I'm still, t- every now and again, I see, like, Metal Gear sur- survive for, like, ten bucks. Yeah. It's like, Maybe, <laughs> maybe I should check that game out. But I, I, I fought the urge off. But then you now. think about buying for a second save point. You're like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, paying ten bucks for a second save. Um, I was like, oh man, that could be a great extra life game. <laughs> but that sounds terrible. So did Resident um, Evil Six, but I never bought it for using that. <laughs> yeah. Remember, we were supposed to play that game together, and, and like it was like sixteen hours in. You're like, you want to play Resident Evil 6 with me? I'm like, no, Gabe. I, like, no. <laughs> I really don't. I'm, I'm playing games I, I thoroughly enjoy. I'm playing Super Mario Odyssey right now, and I, I hate I hate it right now. So the, uh, the not me wanting to play RE6, that sounds terrible. That was fun. That was actually pretty damn funny. I did not even, like, remotely, like, could blame you for that. Because after playing a little bit of it, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I love Extra Life, man, but by, like... Yeah. 8 o'clock at night, and you still got 12 hours to go. You're halfway, maybe a little more. Gaming just sounds terrible. <laughs> and you're playing... I'm playing Mario Odyssey, one of the greatest games maybe of all time. And I'm not having fun. I am actually, in fact, miserable. <laughs> That's how much I hate gaming at that point. And it's like, by 2 or 3 in the morning, you just like, you hate everything. Everything sounds terrible. So yeah, um that that yeah Ugh. um give up a franchise to bring one back Ooh, i have a, i mean there's so many franchises I like to bring back but just like i thought of giving up a franchise it's just like i would love to have kojima doing a metal gear solid game okay again i would actually i would give to if i can have kojima make mgs6 or just even finish mgs5 right give me the complete game give me the game because that game was not done when it came out uh, as great as it was. Uh, it was my game of the year for 2015. Um, like, but give me MGS6. Like, I know one more. To, to, just to finish it off. For good. Uh, I would give up... Uh, not so much a franchise, but a company, actually, rather. Telltale. Okay. Whoa. I would give up Telltale uh, for MGS6. Uh, with Kojima at the helm. Um, and... Like, I'm talking, like, no Konami interference. That game comes out and it's done. And it's done right. Done the way he wants it. Um, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that'd be one. <sighs> hmm. Anything else? <sighs> I'm, hmm. I mean, there's, like, I don't know, like, Dead Space. Love to see you come back. Uh, Mass Effect done correctly. Come back. Yep. Uh... Ooh, what would I give up for a good Mass Effect game? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, like I want to say like Assassin's Creed, but I don't really love that franchise. Really. <laughs> like, like four years ago, that would have been a tough call. Uh, nowadays, that's the easy call. Ooh, I would give up for a great Ma- like one more great Mass Effect trilogy. I would give up. Gears of War. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I love Gears. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely. It's one of my four or five favorite franchises, uh, possibly ever. 
I know it was like when we did our like we did brackets a year or so ago. That was one of my eight. That was one of my eight uh, in my bracket. Um, anything else? Want to get rid of? Madden's a no go. That's like you can't touch Madden. I need Madden. Uh, uh, I would have lost my insanity a long time ago if it wasn't for Madden. I would give up. Ooh, here's a good one. For Dead Space, hmm. for more, great Dead Space games, I would give up. Ooh, Zelda. Wow, for a good Dead Space. Huh. Mm-hmm. Man, that's a large yeah. sacrifice too, man. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I think I would do it. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Oh man, I don't feel good about it. <laughs> don't get me wrong, but I'd probably do it. Yeah, I think I would. So that's that's those are the. You got anything else came came up? Oh while man, let's see. I've thought about series that I wanted to come back. You know that would have like good entries to it. You know, like say Castlevania was definitely one of the ones where I was like, man. I would give up something. I would give up a good franchise or something like that in order to get a great slew of Castlevania games again. And honestly, I would probably just say fuck it to the Yu-Gi-Oh franchise in order to do it. Oh, <laughs> dude, that's a good. Oh man, if I can get another, another great Yu-Gi-Oh game like we got a few years ago, I know, right? That's up there. I know. That mean if I can get like a good every couple of years a great Yu-Gi-Oh game. I know, right? It's like, I don't understand why there hasn't been another decent, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! game on the consoles. I mean, there have been, like, say, on the phone stuff, but I don't want to play that. You have to spend a lot of microtransactions in order to play that stuff decently. Yeah. It's like the Pokemon online games, too. The phone phone Pokemon games. My question to you is, is there any... Fran- would you give up Pokemon for any franchise? Would I give up Pokemon for any franchise? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that really is a good question. Would I give up Pokemon for any other franchise to come back? Hmm. Hmm. Honestly, I think there is. Now that I think about it, there is one franchise Uh-oh. that has been dormant for a hell of a long time and yet we still to this day do not have a localization of the last game that released all the way back in 2006 oh shit okay. i would sacrifice okay. the pokemon franchise to bring out earthbound back from the oh dead. wow why okay. it's because that game is the focal point for a lot of the creation of pokemon to begin with why because a lot of the people that worked on that game Earthbound later went to Game Freak to create the first Pokemon games. And a lot of the aspects and a lot of the way that game Earthbound was established, a lot of those elements went into the Pokemon games. As a matter of fact, a man that we know that recently passed away, Shitoro Iwata, helped work on the Earthbound games and later went on to Pokemon. Now, Mm -hmm. as much as I love playing Pokemon games, and as much as I've loved the franchise over the past 20-something years, honestly, I would just love to see that Earthbound franchise come back in some way, bit, or form. And if that involves sacrificing a multi-billion dollar fucking franchise in order to (laughs) do so, in order to satisfy what I would like to see, then hell, that would be pretty funny. That would be pretty fun. Even though a lot of people yeah. would be pissed off at me for that. <laughs> but uh, Possibly, yeah, yeah. there are things that I do like that, <laughs> believe it or not, I do like things more than just Pokemon. <laughs> uh, understandable. That's crazy. I, yeah, I didn't think you would. Um, but let's, uh, we might have time for one or two more here. All right. Um, favorite video game music soundtrack whatever oh okay Whew. oh boy there are plenty of great video game soundtracks if i had to nail down a couple of like soundtracks or even like the one that's probably one of the more addicting to listen to it would have to be 
honestly, it would have to be Persona 3. Why would I say a Persona game is because a lot of the mixed tracks and even a lot of the, even that subsidiary series itself, there are a bunch of excellent music that were like created by various like famous J-pop bands, but this and that and stuff that are very catchy, that have great dubbing, that have like great like uh, remixes and stuff. So in essence, you know, I would say like Persona 3, Persona 4 in terms of like those soundtracks that I definitely love listening to because they're very catchy. They're very pop-esque, kind of like a pop rock sort of thing. I mean, hell, there's a bunch of great other franchises I love to listen to too, you know, like Castlevania, like Chrono Trigger, like Legend of Zelda, or hell, even to a certain extent, you know, like some of the Pokemon games have some fantastic tra- soundtracks as well. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like a lot of the stuff that I'm very much love to listen to is if you're playing an RPG in general that takes you over 100 hours to beat, which those Persona games take that long if you don't know what you're doing, you have to have some of the best music in order to keep you going throughout that game or else Mm -hmm. you're going to be fucking bored. (laughs) And that's what happened with me with Persona 4 golden on the vita i played that game for over 100 hours and the the soundtrack was amazing to the extent i bought that dancing all night and i platinumed that damn game because i loved that music that much (laughs) very cool yeah um you know i think like my youth uh like the madden soundtracks back in the day were great they got a bunch of great licensed music um like madden 02 and 03 were fantastic mm-hmm. uh and if, and if the nfl street games had some great ones oh yeah um oh god madden 2005 definitely had a good soundtrack too now that i think about it yeah in Play football 2006 Cause it used to just be like they'd have like the fight songs of colleges, and then like, NCAA Football Six had actual licensed music. They had like the Pixies in there, yeah, uh, which was fucking the Baser. Oh, it was awesome. Oh man, uh, they had a few other really great bands in there too. Atomic uh, Garden uh, was great. Um, what's their band? There's the, there's a couple other bands that I love too. Um, oh, man. Like Out all night. Pie t- Pie Tasters. I still love that <laughs> band to this day. Oh dude, I found that. I love that band. I found that band in that game, and then I still love them to, you know, 15 years later. Oh, man. Years later. Have you ever played, like, some of the MVP baseball games back in the day? Yes, Dude, I did. MVP. There's some great soundtracks, MVP man. MVP Baseball 2003, you know, the one with Albert Pujols on the cover and stuff? Mm-hmm. It had some fantastic, like, songs of that soundtrack. I can always think of Walkie Talkie Man, and I'm just thinking, oh, I'm yes! playing that game. <laughs> yeah, he's a Walkie Talkie Man. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it was great. Dude, Dude. yes. I do remember. Yeah, it's between that and also listening to like the soundtracks for like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two. Yeah, and all that other stuff is like, yeah, I used to play a lot of sports games too back then too. <laughs> they had some of the best soundtracks, man. Yeah. There were some great ones. Uh, I remember like I found Black Keys on MLB The Show, oh. uh, the Broken Bells. I found on there as well. Um, yeah, man, there's been some. Uh, yeah, back then there was some great fucking music. Nowadays, not dude, they they get a couple hits and the rest is like, um, you know, it's okay. Uh, but yeah, oh man, back then that was the fucking that was the shit. Yep. Um. More recently, though, I think about like the actual like video game music. Uh, a couple that stick out to me. Uh, uh Life is Strange. Yeah. Um, I have raved multiple times about their music. Uh, I have a multi- multiple different uh, playlists saved on my Spotify from from uh, the people I've created for those games. Uh, like especially before the storm, the music was great. Uh, Daughter, Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, um, I'm trying to think, I can't remember who. Uh, the Captain Spirit had a really great uh, song in there as well. Um, they just do a great job. Uh, don't know how it does about their music. Uh, picking out their music license it's all licensed but they do a great job with it daughter did a good chunk of the music for before the storm um oh man and then uh like last guardian uh i actually uh bought the soundtrack on itunes when it first came out wow. like immediately bought it the day it came out 
Uh, and we'll listen to it every now and again. I mean, I don't listen to it all the time, but I definitely like, um, like, you know, I fucking love that game and just like listening to it. Like, oh man, I can, like, I'm at the point, like I only put the game through once, but I can sit there and I can listen to the music and I know exactly what point of the game that, that song was from. Yeah. That, so, uh, that's, that's definitely, yeah, there's definitely the up there for me. Oh man. Um, I'll tell you what though. There are some. There are some bits of gaming music that I did start listening to recently. Like, some of the soundtrack stuff for, like, say, Borderlands and Borderlands 2 were just pretty fucking yes. fun, too. Like, uh, let's see, Ain't No Rest for the Wicked. That's like I think it was, like, Heavy. The band was, like, Heavy or something like that. Yes, with like, uh, Borderlands 2. That, well, Borderlands yeah. 2 had, like... Uh, that was the Heavy. Yeah, that was the Heavy. The Short Change, I think that one was called. I yeah. wanted to say... Then, because yeah. that opening, the Borderlands uh, 2 and stuff with that song playing, that was a fantastic way to, mm-hmm. to do that. And then, uh, yeah, KG Elephant, actually, because of Borderlands 1, uh, I went and saw them in concert. Wow. Um, but that, I mean, uh, it's one of my current like current bands going. Probably one of my five favorite bands currently going today. Nice. Uh, love that band. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. Like, uh they do some gearbox has some great stuff like even like the telltale uh tales of the borderland games yeah uh each each uh, episode started with like um a song yep and even that shit was awesome like they just do a great job with their music um you played through that one didn't yes you? i did tales from the borderlands yeah. oh man yeah. that was a great game. yeah it was <sighs> um yeah i don't know um Gables, do you have uh, anything else? Any other questions you want to ask? Oh boy, honestly, I think I'm good. <laughs> okay, I think I am as well. Um, so yeah, um, that was uh, part two of our double header uh, for tonight. Um, like like I said, guys, at the beginning of the show, I am currently in Vegas right now. Uh, probably. Um, blacked out at this point <laughs> somewhere uh or hopefully um better yet hopefully won a car or like millions of dollars or something like that um and then we can just do the show forever for free or yeah, nice. not for free but for but just do it forever and just make this our a living um uh, doubt it but that'd be you know best case scenario is that um but yeah thank you guys uh for listening to the show it was kind of fun i enjoy doing these uh from time to time we only do them you know once or twice maybe a year these kind of shows, uh, but they're always fun to do. Uh, kind of different from the norm for us. Uh, allow us to talk more about ourselves and kind of the things that we love about gaming more so than it's like what's going on currently with gaming. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I always have fun with these. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening. If you want to hear more from us? We have a Facebook page and group, Drunk Transfers Podcast. Like, join us on there on Twitter at Drunk Friends Pod. Follow us on there uh, on at twitch.tv slash Drunk Podcast. Um, follow us in there send us friend requests be like friends friends are good on YouTube Drunk Turns Podcast uh, subscribe like our videos uh, and leave us a comment really appreciate if you did so and on iTunes we're uh, at Drunk Turns Drunk, Drunk Dash Turns Podcast subscribe to us in there as well give us a 5 star review leave us a nice little comment in there please um, the more people that give us subscribe and like us and leave comments the more likely it is people will see us so we appreciate if you would do so uh, until next time, I was host, I was Tyler. And I have been Colonel Gables. So until next time, everyone, have yourself a good week, play yourself some good games, and listen to a fun-filled episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Yeah, Gables? Yep. Too sweet, buddy. Too sweet. Boys! See ya.